Hello, everybody. This is going to be a quick video on how to build uh, the uh, sequential iterative averaging warm-up. Um, so let's just sort of dig into it. First, I always like to either Command Shift or Control Shift T to find something. So I can like type sequential and start iterative and test suite usually or suite usually gets me to the right spot. This should run all the tests. I can run that really quickly. It's like all right, so I failed on uh, calling iteratively average on uh, the sequential version. Uh, this implements iterative averager that just has this function that takes an original array, how many iterations you want to do it, and returns the result. And uh, one of the requirements is that you don't mutate this original array. So be sure to do that. So the first thing we're going to do uh, here is uh, create our friend, the phaseable arrays. And uh, in this case, it's going to be phaseable double arrays. And I'm going to call it phaseable. And that's going to be a new, uh, a new instance of that class. So let's see, I control space, and hopefully it'll complete to that for me. Um, new phaseable double arrays. It takes original data, which is good. I have it called original array here, which is fine. Um, and some initializer. So let's tunnel in here. It takes some function. Um, that goes from double to double. So it's it's input is going to be a double array, excuse me, a double array to a double array. And it seems to be calling this initializer function twice. So let me tunnel in here. Now we're in abstract phaseable. If I had F4 in this, you can sort of see all the things. There's one for byte arrays, um, object arrays, which also is interesting. Like if you ever wanted to do that, it's got all sorts of things. Uh, you can have phaseable objects, whatever you want, uh, that'll flip flop back and forth. And since this takes two, uh, it's a generic type of T, it doesn't know how to create these new instances. So like byte arrays, you know, it's going to be passing in two byte arrays. Here for double arrays, we want to allow people to control this function that gets passed in. So <coughs> this is then used for get source from phase and get des from phase. It just sort of flip flops back and forth between, um, you know, for zero, it's original data for source, but then it goes B, A, B, A, B, A. And desk goes A, B, A, B, A, B, right? So um, right now we have to come up with, um, we have to come up with a function to pass in that will, you know, create this buffer every time. So let's sort of look at this. So I've got this guy, this is gonna be a new function that takes in some double array source. Now that source is gonna be this original array, right? It's just gonna pass it into us. We could just refer to that instead if we wanted, but it's fine to pass it along to us. Um, that would be nice. Um, so, you know, sort of one of the things you can do is like final int n equals that source length. Okay, so that's going to be the first thing. And the double, the, you know, the buffer that I'm creating, some double array uh, buffer, is some new double of length n. Okay. And if I return a uh, buffer, that would create space for the entire for this phaseable. So now I have a, a working version of phaseable. And so I can use that to flip-flop back and forth. So my next one is going to be uh, let's get a, um, a a for loop going here. I'm just going to iterate iteration count time. So I'm going to make iteration equal to zero, iteration less than iteration count, that makes sense, right? Uh, plus plus iteration. And then I want to get the source and desk here. So if I like the source for this iteration is going to be my friend phaseable dot get source for phase of that phase index. Well, what's the phase index? It's the iteration count. It's the current iteration, excuse me. And then dest is going to be the desk for that phase. And phase will handle all of the um, all of the you know logic if I tunnel in here, like I was showing, it's going to handle you know passing out which buffer you want, or if it's the zero to be original data. So it's going to handle all the flipping back and forth. And as long as I <coughs> write out desk for phase, you know. Uh, seven, when I go to eight and get the source, it'll be the right uh, source will then equal the previous rounds version, which is exactly what I want. Um, now what I want you to imagine is I'm like, all right, well, now I actually have to go through this data, right? And so like, I want you to imagine for int, um, int i, you know, equal to zero to i less than, let's just pick source, 
length. Uh, they should both be the same, but uh, let's just do it this way. So we're going to go through and do each one. This is slightly wrong. Um, hopefully, uh, for a fair number of you are going to uh, note why it's wrong, is that I can say des sub i, uh, that equals uh, source sub i minus 1 plus source sub i plus 1 times 2. Oh, excuse me, uh, divided by 2, or as I like to do it, times 0 0.5. Okay. Now, this is the basis of iterative averaging. Grab its two neighbors, add them together, and take the average. And at each iteration, you'll slowly but surely um, get closer to the solution. So hopefully, a number of you are already like, hey, wait a minute, that's not right. Um, that's fine. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So when I'm all done with all the iterations, we have to ask ourselves, do I want to get the dest for phase or the, uh, the source for phase? I like to do get source for phase of the iteration count. The reason why I do that uh, is because it's zero to that minus one. This works for all values, including zero. Um, but, you know, like if I'm asked to do zero iterations, it would return original. But the, when you think about it, <clears throat> you just wrote out iteration count minus one to desk. So source for that one would be this. Uh, would be, source would be the next one that you haven't yet done, would be the source, and it'll return back what you just wrote out in the previous iteration. So if I run this, uh, this is going to fail. Um, and so let's go run our test suite. We'll see what's going on. Uh, first of all, we see that it has an array index out of bounds. Now we don't just say it's an error. Let's look at what it is. Index was minus 10 out of bounds for length 10. So, oh, right, 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 right. So this makes sense. I don't want to do from, I don't want to do the outer one. So what I can do is say like, if I is greater than zero, well, I can do that one, right? If I is greater than zero, do this, right? And like, all right, now I'm going to fail on the end where it's like, all right, 10, all right, and oh, I'm like, all right, and, and, I is less than source length. Oh, come on now, complete for me. Source dot length minus one, right? And if I do that, I'll sort of get past and start, I'm no longer throwing that out of bounds. Um, I want everyone to pause the video and come up with a much better solution to this problem. Okay, we're back. Hopefully a lot of you were like, yeah, like why do this check? Let's just change the range bounds, right? So that seems good. Um, so when I run this, now it's going to fail in a different way. You can see that, all right, so it differed at level element nine. So this is again a 10 long one. It's expecting zero but was one. This is the fact that now I'm no longer doing zero and n minus one. I'm never touching it. So this buffer at the top is not right. So what I could do is say, all right, well, let's put this if back in. If, you know, like, uh, let's, we could go back to zero and I could be like, check for that and just copy it, right? You know, if, let's say I did this and I'm like, if I equal zero, like, uh, dest sub i equals source sub i. And that would solve the problem, right? Um, you know, else, you know, and I would have one for, uh, let me just actually do this. So like we're going to do source length and I'm like, if it's that or excuse me, <clears throat> I equals source length minus one, right? We're going to pass, right? But now you're sitting there saying, all right, so like imagine this iteration count is a million and this thing is a hundred, you know, like, uh, you know, 100,000. Now, like, I'm just constantly checking this thing, like, why am I doing this over and over again? I only need it for the beginning, right? So let's go back to here, and we can say, like, all right, like, never mind that idea. I'm going to just um, try at the very beginning. You could imagine me saying, all right, so, like, give me the double array A. I know that's going to be, like, phaseable. Get source for phase one. That'll be A. And I could get B, and that'll be dest for phase one. And I can say, all right, so A sub zero equals, um, you know, this original array sub zero. And uh, A sub, you know, A dot length minus one 
is original array. Now I could do a dot length minus one here. You could also do original array dot length minus one. Everyone's the same length, so it's going to be fine. Um, so I could do this, right? Where I'm like, all right, a and b are like this, right? Um, and now I don't have to check every time, right? And I'm only doing it once. I'm not doing it every single iteration doing this work. So I'm doing a little less work. It makes this part of my algorithm a little cleaner. Um, but I'm still doing this kind of like this thing up here. So I want everyone to pause again and come up with a better way to do this. Okay, so we're back. So uh, one of the things is you'll note that uh, there's a reason why I had this function that I made you pass in here to double arrays, right? That sometimes you want to have a little custom initialization for something like the double arrays that are first created. This is exactly one of those cases. Um, so let's go back here and be like, yeah, while I'm at it, while I'm creating this buffer, <clears throat> why don't I just do it here? <laughs> Okay, um, and then I never have to look it up. Every buffer always gets initialized just how I want it to be, and now it'll also run and pass. Now this this bit of utility is going to be used all the time, right? We're always going to want to do that um, for all the iterative averages that you're going to build. Um, so uh, I made a util studio. It's got a couple of different things. One is to uh, slice into ranges. Um, this is going to be uh, a very specific, you're also, when you do the parallel ones, you're going to slice things up. Um, and so this is going to be just a custom call for that that you're going to want to do. Um, and this is the one where uh, create phaseable double arrays for iterative averaging. Like this is going to do this work, right? Uh, we did right here. Oh, excuse me. We did right here uh, so that every single iterative average you build does this same logic. Uh, with that, um, Good luck. I, I highly encourage you all to try this warm up uh, without watching, you know, like uh, do something else, spend 15 minutes doing anything else, uh, burn your uh, short term memory and see if you can rebuild this. Um, we're going to have another warm up and then uh, you'll be able to dig into the studio.